Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are across uh, North America and beyond. Thanks so much for joining us. My name's Chris Adams. I look after research and insights. We're gonna get underway in the next sort of 20 or 30 seconds. So just stand by. Everybody, it's great, uh, wonderful uh, to be back with old friends to share insights from the State of the American Traveler, uh, one of the leading leisure research reports that we've collaborated on with destination analysts for more than a decade. Plus, we've got a uh, great uh, guest speaker today, and we'd be uh, delighted to be joined by two really old friends and very familiar faces. So, Dave Braddon co-founder of Destination Analyst is joining us from the Bay Area, uh, as we can see. Greetings, Dave. Greetings, Chris. Good to see you. Good to see you, mate. Um, and uh, I'll pass over to Dave very shortly. We've got a, a wonderful guest <laughs> today, a very good friend and uh, old colleague, Dave Santucci, Chief Marketing Officer of Chattanooga Tourism Company. Dave joined us uh, for an update back in April, and uh, I know, Dave, how busy you've been in recent months. Welcome. Thank you, Chris. It's good to be back with you and uh, uh, looking forward to talking more. Right. And so um, Dave uh, is going to be sharing insights and, and key takeaways from uh, Chattanooga around locals marketing. So just a reminder, the State of the American Traveler Research, which is an institution, frankly, in the travel in industry in the United States. Um, we've been sharing unique insights from uh, what's going on across uh, the country over the last 12 plus years. And you can see those web addresses for accessing all the past editions, um, plus the, <coughs> the slides. And then the actual PDF version is gonna be out in about uh, two or three weeks in early December. Um, and just a reminder, destination analysts do wonderful um, weekly research on COVID-19 of their own, and you can access the destination analysts website there for more information. And I think Dave's going to be sharing some of those insights. So let's have a quick look at the agenda today. So first, Dave's going to be sharing the latest traveller sentiment research from um, both the State of the American Traveler as well as their weekly COVID-19 research. And then we're going to be diving into locals, uh, their unique outlook and perspective. They're going to be so critical over the coming months in terms of supporting local business. Um, and then Dave Santucci is going to join us to provide some practical examples and case studies of, of what is happening on the ground in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and and their efforts to support local business and to engage with local residents. Um, so without further ado, let me pass over to uh, Dave Bratton. Welcome, mm -hmm. Dave, um, and uh, over to you. Thank you, Chris. Let me get this, uh, there we go. And thank you all for joining us here today. I'm really excited to talk to you about the results of the State of the American Traveler Survey. Um, you guys may have noticed we gave it a rather strange name this time, the Locals Edition. This quarterly survey typically looks at people's travels far afield, you know, what are people thinking about their travels in the upcoming year and such. But we've kind of, because of the COVID disaster we're, we're getting through, we've kind of changed the focus of this to look more locally, regionally, and talk about issues like staycations and all this time, with the understanding that We've got another six months or so to go before we can even think about being done with this uh, in any meaningful way. And uh, DMOs are going to need to be, yeah, I know you already are, but uh, it, hopefully it'll help in our thinking about local work. Um, so you may be aware that this survey is done quarterly. Our friends at Miles have been helping us with it for a decade, as Chris said. Uh, it's an online survey conducted since 2006. and we send a survey invitation to a nationally representative sample of American adults, collect 2,000 approximate surveys per quarter. And uh, just so you know, this data was collected last weekend, basically, Friday and Sunday, uh, where the, from Friday to Sunday, we collected the data. So it's hot off the press. I've been scrambling to get this ready for you all. So I hope you'll forgive any typos that might be in it. 
Uh, so my agenda today, I'm gonna to first go through current traveler sentiment. We're gonna talk about what people know about their local DMOs and how they feel about them. We'll then talk about regional travel and what people are expecting in the next six months. We'll talk about staycations and then move on to local possibilities, I'm calling it. Basically, how are people feeling about getting out and having fun in their local communities right now? So let's talk about current traveler sentiment. Um, first question, in the next 12 months, do you expect to travel more or less for leisure than you did in the most recent 12 month period? Now, we see it's fairly split at this point in time in thirds almost, with the single largest proportion being those who expect to be holding constant. 26.9% uh, expect to travel more, excuse me, less for leisure and 329 expect to travel more in the next 12 months. Now keep in mind, this is comparing the past 12 months, which have been kind of a disaster to what people are looking at in the future as we go through this. But I'm gonna show you uh, the proportion of travelers over time who have said they expect to travel more for leisure uh, in the upcoming year than they did last year. If you look back at the start of this in the great recession, we had a huge drop of uh, a traveler, a, you know, excitement for traveling more in the next year. And compare that to now in the pandemic, we had a similar drop, a little bit more significant in this metric, all the way down to 15.3%. Um, and you can see that nowhere in our history of this have we come anywhere near that a level of low. But in this most recent wave, we've jumped back up to 32.9%, which is, if you look at the chart right there, the line I've put in for you, it's pretty similar to what we've seen in the past in the good times. Now, again, keep in mind, this is in relative to a really bad year. So we're not saying that things are back to normal in any way, shape or form. And you'll see that in some later things, but we've certainly seen some improvement over the most recent uh, four months. Um, so that's good news. Um, have flown in here, they expect that a, the percent that expect to travel less for leisure. You see that jumped up in the great recession and it blew through the roof in the pandemic, up to 52.8% this summer. Uh, huge change, much bigger than what we saw in the Great Recession. Uh, and at no point have we been anywhere near that, but we've improved. And right now, if you just look back over time, our 26.9% that are expecting to travel less next year, we're about where we were at the worst point of the Great Recession. So that's kind of ugly, but it's certainly an improvement of where we were at. Uh, just real quickly, you can see the proportion that are going to hold constant here. We ask a similar or a question, a follow-up question this time to people who expect to travel more. Uh, where are they going to be doing this more traveling? Well, 70% in the U.S., but 10% expect to go outside the country more this year. 209 expect to do both. And I just, as a point of reference, in a typical year, 29, 30% of travelers will travel outside the United States. So what the people that are expecting to expand their travels this year right now are looking at about like the typical traveler in normal times in terms of their outbound expectations. Okay, uh, so let's just go through the spending stuff. We have a similar story when we ask people how much they're gonna spend in the upcoming year compared to last year. So the story is almost identical there, uh, supporting what we saw. Next question, thinking carefully about how much you expect to spend, how you expect to spend your income in the next 12 months, please use a scale to describe your priorities. Well, we see that about 22% of travelers now think that leisure travel will be an extremely high or high priority, 17% a low priority. Now, if we look at what we call the top box score, these top three, and compare it to the bottom three, the somewhat low to extremely low, over the last several years, it looks something like this. Typically travelers are prioritizing leisure travel very high, you know, between 70 and 60%, but that dropped a lot. Uh, in winter, we were in great shape. You know, as we've talked about before, this, this January, we were blowing the roof off everything and that dropped off in the summer. But we've seen some improvement here in the fall with more people rating travel as a top three box uh, priority in their family budget. So some more good news looking forward. Um, another question here, um, and, ex and excuse me, looking back, you'll see that even though we've been seen improvement, we're nowhere near where we were in the past. Okay, one final question. 
Uh, how much in total do you expect to spend on travel at the most in the next 12 months? We can see that the proportion of travelers that want to spend uh, that at a maximum will spend over 4,000 has actually gone up in this wave from last July. And the percent that are in the lowest uh, category here has gone down. And let's look at this over time because this is very, uh, I want to say some good news too. You can see that how this, this maximum expected travel budget in the average, the mean, has changed over time. And right now we're at about where we were in the good times. So a lot of the people who are going to be traveling look like their budgets are going to be holding in a very solid uh, way through the next year, at least right now. So some good news here for all of us. Let's shift now and talk about DMOs. Uh, we wanted to kind of explore what people know about their local DMOs. So we asked them simply, does your community have one? The, and only 25.6% of travelers, keep in mind, this is not a broad survey of everyone. These are people who travel and think that they're, de they're no, excuse me, that their destination has one, not their destination, their hometown has one. 38.3% don't know. Another third say, no, they don't. Now, only one in five in our sample live in a rural area. So I think it tells a pretty clear story that most people just don't know if they have one or not, um, because most, you know, most urbanized or suburban places in this day and age have some sort of DMO covering them. Um, by generation, older people are more likely to uh, say that they have one in their town. And people who live in a popular tourist destination are much more likely than those that don't to say they have a DMO. Now, how, where do I get this data from? Well, we ask a question, uh, agreement question. I live in a community that's a popular tourist destination. 42% of us think they do, 33.8 no. They don't live in such a place. Now, here's a good one. Familiarity with local DMOs work. How familiar are you with the work done by your local DMO? 41.3% um, say they're familiar, extremely familiar with it. And this gets kind of interesting when we look at it by generation. You'll note that younger people were less likely to think they had one or know they had one in their community, but they're way more likely to say they are familiar with what, uh, what the DMO does. Now, I'm just gonna tell you, as a researcher, I've asked familiar questions on hundreds of surveys and younger people are always more likely to say they're familiar with stuff than older people. Uh, I like to joke that, you know, if I asked on a survey, uh, are you, how familiar are you with day-to-day -day life in the 1960s and 70s? Uh, millennials would be more likely to say they're familiar with that than baby boomers. And I, I, I guarantee you, if I asked it, that's how it would come out. So take that with a little grain of salt. A uh, place of residence, similar story. If they live in a popular de tourist destination, they're more likely to be familiar with your work, but still less than half. And then evaluating the work, how good was it? From very good to very poor, 72.2% say it's very good or good. Not a lot of difference in terms of age, uh, but if you live in a, what you see as a popular tourist destination, you're more likely to rank your DMO higher, 82.5% compared to 54 for those that don't live in a popular tourist destination. So some background before we jump into the uh, staycations and local stuff, regional stuff. 57% uh, of travelers have taken a trip during the COVID crisis, a leisure trip. 46.5% uh, expect to take one in the next six months. Um, and when we talk about travel state of mind, we ask this question, uh, thinking about your leisure travel from now through next summer, what best describes how you're feeling? And we see that 58% say they're ready to travel, 30% um, with some hesitation, the rest without. And then the other, you know, 42%-ish uh, are just not ready to travel. They need more time. And I'm going to take you through some data we collect. And we do a weekly coronavirus travel sentiment index study. And from that, you can see that the data on the left this week is very similar to what I just showed you from the State of the American Traveler. But interestingly, the blue bar, which shows those that are ready to travel, has been on a steady incline over the last several months from June to now. So as we get used to this pandemic, more and more people are feeling they're ready to travel, uh, which is good news too. Um, but keep in mind that 42.9% still are not ready to travel yet and no industry can survive in a healthy way with 40% of its customers walking out the door. So we got a lot of work to do. Um, 
most people are going to be very cautious traveling in the next 12 months, 71% very cautious or cautious. Only 9% say they'll travel freely with no concerns or not particularly cautiously. Um, travel is important to people's health and wellness. Uh, the percent saying it's important to their personal well-being, you can see is around 60%. Only 5.4 say it's unimportant to them. Um, and working when they traveled during the pandemic, uh, Chris was interested in this, so we added it this time to kind of look at how, what kind of markets there for people who might want to go travel and uh, stay someplace and work. And we can see that 8.5% have worked remotely on a longer trip and 15.4% on a shorter trip during the COVID crisis. By and large, most though are not traveling and working. Um, on upcoming planned travel, we can see in terms of shorter trips in the next six months, a wide variety of things going on. And interestingly, one in four expect that they will take midweek trips with no week, weekend days included. So there's some hope there, obviously, too, to, to fill hotel rooms during, uh, during the non-peak weekends. OK, let's move to regional travel. Um, and just so you know, the survey defined regional travel as 250 miles one way from home. We made it very clear that, that we're, that's what we're talking about in these questions. So you can kind of see on the map here what that might in, entail for various destinations. Um, and 46.6% of travelers say they're going to take a regional trip in the next six months, that they're very likely or likely to do so. And this will take place as overnight trips and day trips, both 50% day trips will take a day trip and 67% expect to travel overnight in their region. Um, and this, this chart I think is extremely important and very illustrative of the times we're in right now. The most visited type of destination on these regional trips will be small towns, villages, or rural destinations and attractions, followed by cities and beach destinations. Now, keep in mind, when we if you've been with us before, you've seen that typically cities are king in American travel. When we've asked similar questions, uh, people are far more likely to say they're going to cities and they take more trips to cities as well. So this all makes sense that the beaches and small towns would move up on this uh, particular type of destination where people are trying to get away from others and be safe. Um, okay, resources that they'd use for a regional trip, you know, web searches, of course, number one, but Facebook, number two, and very interestingly, official state or local visitor guides at 18.5%. Um, what websites they would use specifically, we can see here that DMO websites, 18.9 for local and 18.7 for state tourism websites. If we add those two together, that's 28% saying they'd use a DMO website. If we add that, that visitor guide piece from the last question, in total, we'd expect that 34.9% of travelers would use one of those three DMO resources for leisure travel in their region coming up in the next year or so. So uh, good result for DMOs, certainly. Um, let's move on to staycations. Uh, right now, uh, about 40% of travelers expect to take a vac staycation in the next six months. They're very likely or likely to do so. Now, we talked to those people about what a staycation would mean. And it's interesting that about 40% of them said simply not traveling, staying mostly at home. But good news for DMOs that want to get their locals out enjoying the community or region, 51.6% say that, that that would primarily be spending time enjoying their community or spending time enjoying the broader region in which they live. So obviously a big chunk of travelers here who uh, can be convinced possibly to uh, have some fun in the community while they're uh, chilling out. What activities they'd be most interested in, taking a road trip, day trips to area attractions, restaurants, having friends and family come visit, museums, and so on. 16.6% staying in a hotel, motel, or inn in the area. So moving on to our home communities. Um, now, we, we know that you know, DMOs are traditionally marketing for inbound traffic, right? But now, the world so different. We kind of wanted to shape this area of the questionnaire to understand what kind of role the DMO might play in promoting local activity, how much are consumers bought into that concept, and test some ideas that 
uh, DMOs might explore to get people out and spending money in their members or uh, local community businesses. So uh, two pieces of data I'm gonna show you from our weekly tracking study. The first one is an agreement statement. How much do you agree with the following? I still feel, co I, I still feel comfortable going out of my community to restaurants, local attractions and undertaking local activities. Right now, 44.2% of us say we feel comfortable doing that. Either they agree or strongly agree with that. But what we've seen over the course of the pandemic is a slow improvement up to where we are now from as low as 19% in the early days. We've had a little wiggling around here recently, as you can see on the far right of the historical data, but we're moving at least in some positive direction in terms of uh, getting people out and spending money in the community. But when we ask them to, how they agree with this statement, I do not want travelers coming to visit my community right now. We've had a little bit of improvement from uh, the past, but overall still 53.4% say that they don't want people coming to their hometown uh, travelers. So, okay, we asked them to evaluate their home community. Tell us you know, how good these attributes are, where you live. Most of us are pretty happy with mo much of what we have to offer. 75% uh, almost like the restaurants as either outstanding or good. Parks get high rating, shopping gets high rating as well as outdoor attractions. Um, when we ask about things they're missing in the pandemic, well, restaurants are number one, followed by movie theaters and shopping. And then what activities have they done during the pandemic in their local community? 56.7% have done carry out you look down a little below, only a third have done restaurant dining inside, um, the most missed activity. Uh, going to local parks and shopping, also fairly high on this activity list. So then we asked them, well, in the next six months, how likely are you to do each? And you see in this chart, the percent that say they're very likely or likely to do so. 81% expect to go to a restaurant to do carry out or delivery. 76% shopping, 56 restaurants. Now, the reason we set it up this way is that we could compare what people have done in the past six months to what they expect to be doing in the next six months. And I think it shows a really interesting story, a positive story of ambition to get out in communities and do things or hopefulness at least. And you see these ranked here in terms of the absolute difference between the likely next six months in dark blue and the, light, the actual past six months in light blue. So in terms of outdoor attractions, 53% of travelers want to get out and do their outdoor attractions in the next six months in their local area. Only 22% said they did it in, during the last six months. Similar for restaurants, indoor attraction, movies, all of them. Uh, what people are hoping to do in the next six months far outpace what they've been doing during the pandemic. So uh, good sign psychologically for getting this type of activity going. And again, one thing I just wanna make sense, I don't wanna make it clear that I'm suggesting anything given the horrific nature of what's going on right now in the country, but from a purely the idea of getting people out and enjoying the community, this would feel like uh, some level of enthusiasm here. Okay, what resources would they use for local information on things to do? 29% picked one of our DMO resources here. Number one, local newspapers, social media, number two, attractions, other online content, broadcast TV, and so on. But clearly the DMO has a seat at the table, potentially in terms of getting people out locally to uh, enjoy themselves. And there's a lot of interest in learning about ways to, um, have fun in their community, 60% strongly agree or agree that they're interested in learning about safe ways to have fun in their home community. So as your curators of that content, you have an audience that's uh, interested in learning about it for sure. Um, supporting local business is very important to me right now. Again, an agreement scale, 73.2%. So they strongly agree or agree with that. So you have a community out there that wants to learn about what's going on and they want to support local businesses by and large. And we asked this one question. Imagine your community's chamber of commerce or tourism visitor office uh, put together a customer rewards, loyalty, discount program exclusively for locals to use. The program is designed to support local businesses. In general, how interested would you be 
in participating in each of these. And you can see the percent that say they'd be very interested or interested and, you know, virtually all 88% said restaurant programs would be of interest, shopping as well, attractions, even hotels, almost half uh, for their friends and relatives, another half for staycation type activities. So um, clearly there's some opportunity here, or at least interest in most travelers in um, programs like that if one were um, interested in developing them. Okay, so my key takeaways from this uh, rather short presentation, um, travel expectations have improved significantly from earlier in the pandemic. But keep in mind what I'm talking about is longer term expectations. I really don't want you to walk away from this thinking we're talking short term because we're not. Um, and this includes the metrics of expected future travel, expected future spending, prioritization of travel and budgets and the maximum expected travel budget for the next year. All of them have moved forward a great deal from where we were in the summer, at least. Um, the DMO industry appears to have a significant awareness challenge with not a lot of us um, knowing that we have one in our home communities. Uh, and regional travel in the next six months will likely comprise a significant share of trips taken. Um, and demand for non-urban non travel experiences is likely to remain high given what we see in terms of where people are expecting to travel. 40% um, of travelers expect to staycation in the next six months. And about half see a staycation as a chance to explore their local community or their region. And a significant portion of travelers are comfortable navigating their communities during the pandemic right now. Uh, and the desire to get out and enjoy our communities again seems to be strong as well as a desire to support our local businesses. So one final takeaway for you all uh, as represented by this uh, meme. Um, I, I've been, my company has been doing this uh, weekly consumer sentiment research for 37 weeks now. And I've been looking for any signs of hope, which there really haven't been many over this, you know, over the course of the pandemic, but I gotta tell you with the emergence of these vaccine options that are apparently coming online in the next you know, few months, we definitely see something going on out there in terms of sentiment. And I'm very hopeful that as we move into the next year, things will start to bust loose and we'll be able to look in more depth at different traveler types that may actually be very marketable and uh, give DMOs a chance to start uh, start moving forward effectively with their advertising and all. So thank you guys for your time today. I'm gonna to pass it back over to Chris at this point. Thanks so much, Dave. And thanks for that um, ray of hope. I think there are, is some positive news and we've got to remind ourselves that, you know, the desire, the under, underlying fundamentals that has driven the growth of tourism over recent decades um, all of those drivers remain uh, unmuted by this pandemic. Um, so travel will return, but it's certainly- Without any doubt, uneven. Chris, you know, yeah. but people are, people are and have been afraid to travel. So um, I think that's the magic of the vaccine thing is that it will give us some hope that people will not, not have that fear haunting them, you know? Yeah. Now, just a couple of quick questions. Um, so a couple of the attendees were asking about uh, this awareness issue, which I think is absolutely fundamental, both short and long term. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned you think the vast majority of uh, respondents live in places which actually have DMOs. Uh, yeah, I would I would suspect that. I mean, eighty percent of our sample are people who live in cities and towns, um, suburban areas, or large metropolitan cities. Um, yeah. So, and I, I don't know many you know, many areas that don't have some sort of DMO representation, uh, even rural areas have them, you know, so. Yeah. In fact, Destinations International did an analysis. There's over 2,300 DMO type organizations across the United States, including more traditional CVB states, but also, um, you know, chambers of commerce and um, downtown associations, et cetera. Yeah, well, we all know that DMO is the center of the universe, right? But I don't think uh, <laughs> people outside our industry quite are, are on board no. with us on that. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can tackle 
tackle this awareness issue, that's going to be a critical uh, long-term beneficiary. And just one final question before I'll invite Dave Santucci to uh, join us. Um, the outbound, those people who are interested in traveling um, outbound from the United States to international destinations. Did you have any, any indication about where they were thinking about traveling? Yeah, that's interesting. We uh, Some data have not shown anybody yet. We took the last third of the questionnaire and asked about outbound travel and where people want to go. Uh, it's not surprising Europe, Canada, Mexico are at the top, but we'll be releasing that data probably within a month and it'll be very detailed in terms of the the regions they want to visit and the uh, places within each region that are highest uh, highest awareness. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, for our Canadian colleagues that are joining us today, there's some positive news there, um, and uh, we're going to be looking further at that whole space, as Dave indicated. But for now, there's a great opportunity, obviously, to tap into some of that money that people would otherwise have spent internationally. Okay, thanks, Dave. I'll invite you back at the end and let Thank me. Chris. Uh, I've got a quick question for Dave, actually, before you drop off. Uh, that flavor of ice cream, you didn't actually name it. Do you have a name? <laughs> that, uh... I think it's called 2020, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I grew up in Boston where that weather was pretty common, and yeah. uh, I think that, that that picture really spoke to me. You can imagine how that would taste, yeah. <laughs> I just want to say before you drop off, Dave, too, um, just on behalf of everybody on this call, I'm the only one who can unmute. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, I've been following this data from the beginning. It's been driving our decision making. It's been our beacon of light. We share it with our partners. Um, thank you so much. So well, Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that very much. So, yeah. Yes, here, here. Thanks so much, Dave, to you, Aaron, and the whole team of Destination Analysts. Okay, so uh, Dave uh, Santucci, Chief Marketing Officer with Chattanooga Tourism Company. Dave, uh, you joined us in April. Uh, do you just want to give us a very quick update on what's happening in Chattanooga, uh, the impact of the pandemic, uh, local businesses, etc.? Certainly, Chris. And uh, I'll just say, um, uh, to start off first, I uh, appreciate you putting these on and uh, hosting these and having us back on. Um, it's been quite, quite a ride for the past uh, few months. Um, and, you know, the past seven months have been very challenging for all of us, humbling, uh, of course. And I think you asked us to come on because, um, you know, we kind of, as a destination, exemplify uh, a couple things here. One is uh, a DMO that really did struggle with local awareness and engagement. Um, and have made major shifts that uh, have been accelerated by the pandemic. Uh, and two, um, we also have had quite a few successes as a result of um, our destination being an outdoors destination, uh, strong branding there, as well as um, you know, a strong drive-in market. So uh, we've had some successes, hopefully I can share with everybody there. But for those that don't know, Chattanooga is a billion dollar tourism industry, um, it, or at least was. Um, and uh, we also um, went through new leadership change a couple of years ago and have made making major strides to engage our local community. Um, and this year has uh, really, really changed that. Um, we, we've engaged Miles to work with us uh, and worked, been working on our new branding. Um, and, and we've had quite a few successes. Uh, at the same time, uh, one in three people lost their jobs in uh, the tourism industry back in April. Uh, I'm happy to say about 95% uh, are back to work at this point. Um, we've been dealing with uh, the, the crazy economy that I think many of you have where we have capacity issues in some places, uh, as well as just you know some challenges in places even struggling to stay open, um, just as a result of you know what people are comfortable with and uh, what they're doing right now, as we've seen uh, through that research. Uh, so you know we're uh, in a position that's better than most, um, and we. Uh, have been able to leverage that outdoors reputation. Uh, we've been leading uh, the cities in Tennessee in terms of recovery with hotel demand and uh, amusement uh, spending. Uh, so our attractions are are doing well. Um, but that you know that's kind of where we are right now, Chris. And I'll I'll just say to Lauren or whoever I'm I've 
lost mouse control over the slides. So I'll just say advance if you don't mind taking control back over the slides. No worries. So um, why don't we jump into, you know, the heart of uh, the topic today, which is about engaging with locals. And you, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, the evolution you've been going through. Um, what about outreach to local businesses? Do you want to talk about those efforts? Yeah, um, let's jump through a couple slides here, if we could, Lauren, and uh, I'll tell you when to stop. But um, what we've had, uh, let's go right here, ingrain safety, instill confidence, and inspire uh, visitation. That's been driving us the whole time uh, from the beginning and what we've picked up from the research. Uh, so what we've done to engage our, our local communities, we've started with our partners like all of you, and we had uh, an opportunity, we literally were meeting with them daily, um, and we're down to, we went to weekly and then bi-weekly and now monthly. Um, and some of the ways in which um, we've worked to engage them is, is to go beyond just, um, you know, kind of walk you through the evolution a little bit. Uh, we had a, an auction we started with, within that support level. Uh, and then we moved into developing videos and we worked with Miles to create our new branding, but then we recut those videos to instill confidence uh, in, in our uh, travelers, uh, as well as starting that locally and running those spots uh, locally. And we actually have a paid media effort um, you know, to make sure that uh, people do have that uh, confidence instilled. Um, so with the local businesses now, what we're trying to manage through is this crazy, you know, especially going into the holidays where holiday attractions have a very limited capacity. Um, and how do we, when people show up and the, they're sold out for the day, how do we drive them to have a good experience, providing those talking points to people who are up at the, um, you know, front gate and saying, well, I'm sorry, we're sold out today, but you could also try these other places. Um, and then also trying to communicate in advance to make those reservations so that you don't encounter, encounter that in the first place. So this is just a few of the ways we're working with our local businesses uh, at the time. So um, <clears throat> let, let's talk about engaging with the local residents, local community. So um, efforts you've been doing over the last uh, seven months, what's worked, what hasn't been perhaps quite as engaging, uh, and what are your plans for you know the next few months when local support's gonna be so critical to helping our local business community? Great, and Laura, if you wanna to jump to slide nine, um, there's some videos there. Um, it's, uh, I'll tell you when to stop, but what we've had here, yes, that's it. So we've had incredible support um, from the state in, uh, uh, in Tennessee uh, where they've worked to get CARES Acts into our hands. And one of the things we did with that was to really uh, start with ingraining safety and uh, instilling confidence. Um, I will reference uh, Destination Analyst back in July provided uh, that 94% of uh, travelers either were positive or neutral about masks. And we were able to work with our uh, county mayor and we have a mask mandate in uh, Hamilton County where Chattanooga is. Um, so that ingraining safety has been at the core of it. Uh, we then uh, created these videos and you wouldn't think that you would run in your local market um, what hotels are doing uh, to have better safety. Um, but we're thinking about that visiting friends and relatives. We're thinking about that local message resonating outwards that if the locals don't have confidence or aren't aware of what's going on, then that's not gonna uh, instill confidence in our visitors either. Uh, so we start with the local community. We created four videos. Uh, one was for hotels, restaurants, attractions, and then a destination-based one. And we run those locally. We run them combined with a inspiration for getting out and exploring uh, message in about a 50-50 uh, mix in Chattanooga. And then in the visitor market, we're uh, putting that a little lower in the funnel. So obviously we need to inspire uh, visitation first, but once we've engaged, how do we uh, move people towards uh, these um, opportunities to either 
uh, have confidence in the travel or you know, be safe. So if we go to the next slide, um, you can see um, we started back with the auction and the support, next slide. Um, we then uh, moved into taking those videos and rolling them out uh, across our local community and out into uh, a visitor market, next slide. And we then uh, focused with our content on the outdoors uh, and the safety messaging, and then next slide. And it's just an evolution of, of what we've done with, with local engagement. And now we've moved into engaging our local community in the arts. Um, so we started off with like live concerts back when everything was shut down, but now that people can get out, we've created a series, a video series, which we're sharing, um, as well as a, a map of art exploration that is you know, safe uh, in terms of the way in which you can go explore. Uh, next slide. And we've moved this uh, all, we launched a new site this week, which also includes a microsite for uh, Chad Nugans for locals uh, to really, be able to be inspired about getting out into the community. Next slide. And you know, lastly, we've uh, moved this into the holidays and our, we had created a holiday trail of lights uh, that was visitor focused, but now um, we primarily have gotten this out into the local community so they can uh, have an understanding of all the different things they can do for the holidays and created actually a clean and safe itinerary specific to the holidays. Very good. So, um, and what sort of feedback have you had, Dave, uh, from the local community? Uh, obviously, there's this awareness issue that you've grappled with, um, but in terms of positive response, how have you been measuring that? Yeah, so um, back when the, the data started coming out from Destination Analysts about th this uh, and how receptive people are uh, to visitors coming into town. We partnered with our chamber uh, that does, you know, uh, surveys regularly and said, can we get this same question out within our community to understand, you know, it's great to have a national picture, but how are we doing? Um, and so that data came back and it was, it was pretty favorable. You know, two thirds were positive or neutral uh, and that moved up to a peak of about 75%. Um, in late summer. And, you know, if I had to look at it right now as cases are rising across the nation, um, you know, it's probably falling back a little bit would be my guess. But um, we're looking for that data. We're doing that data about quarterly at this point. And it's really helped us keep a, uh, our, our finger on the pulse locally. Yeah. So um, looking longer term, once we get beyond this pandemic, Dave, what's your thinking about the ongoing engagement with, with locals? So obviously we've, you know, hopefully made, uh, you know, this moment really matter in terms of engaging with the local community, but longer term after the pandemic, how do you see your ongoing communication and relationship being with local residents? Um, I, I feel like we've all learned a ton through this. Um, we've all been humbled. Um, and we're all constantly changing, right? And uh, trying to adapt. And, and that's exactly what, what we're doing in Chattanooga. So um, we're gonna take so much of what we've learned through this year into the future. Um, you know, I think we've all learned, the, many people learned this before the pandemic, but this has just been so hammered away that, you know, our local perceptions, our local audience are, are more important than ever um, and having that support. So. You know, we're evolving our program. So we started the year with an auction, you know, to help our local businesses uh, through the start of the pandemic when they were all shut down. That's now evolved into an online store. Um, currently, we just have our branded items in there. But in 2021, we're looking at, can we support our local artisans and sell their products uh, through our online store as we build up an audience uh, for that? We also, you know, are looking at, we used to have a visitor's guide. We're, we're transitioning that to an inspirational magazine that is relevant uh, to the local community. Um, we're building our partnerships with our economic development counterparts and seeing ways in which we can uh, continue to collaborate and grow. I mean, I think this is not unique to Chattanooga. We've all been thrown into deeper conversations and try to, how do we survive and how do we uh, thrive and, you know, we're going to continue that. Um, you know, one thing I think, you know, 
we potentially were going to talk about Chris too was like the struggles and things that that have have not gone quite as well as expected. Um, and I'll tell you that our our co-op program, um, you know, we launched a co-op program trying to help everybody through this, and we even were able to put a one-to-one -one match uh, with that, um, so that you know maybe we could get tons of partners to jump in on that. And it's been a much slower start than than I had expected. Um, very happy to have the partners that we have, but we have to recognize that so many are suffering um, on the one end. And then I also have partners that are saying, I don't have capacity on the other end. And so we're only really serving the middle right now, but we're gonna take that and build on it um, and just know that you know we have to be uh, constantly communicating with our partners to understand where they are. Yeah, those are really valuable insights. Thanks so much, Dave. So um, we'll come back to Dave and I'll ask Dave Bratton to also um, come join us. Uh, let me just share a couple of resources before we come to a uh, couple of questions that have come in. So um, just a reminder, the webinar recording, the slides are all available on those uh, websites you can see there. And again, check out Destination Analyst's uh, weekly research offerings around uh, COVID-19 and the um, and that deep rich information that they've been collecting. Um, we've been at Miles very busy over the last uh, eight, nine months, a real team effort pulling together resources from a wide variety of research partners, data partners, uh, case study examples, clarity in a time of crisis. So you can check out that uh, website, um, which includes uh, past recordings, not just from the ones we've been running, but we've curated webinars from across all the leading organizations. And there's been so many, of course, but if you've missed one, you can go back into our webinar area and check those out. I just wanted to highlight a couple of resources that we've um, been busy on in the last two or three weeks, uh, funding, Funding is a critical issue for DMOs. Um, and uh, last week we ran a transatlantic webinar with uh, DMO leaders from uh, Stockholm, Hamburg, New York City, and Anaheim, in addition to distilling uh, research from across Europe and North America. Um, and if you missed that webinar, um, you can visit that web address, check out the webinar. We've got a 15 page executive summary of the two research reports or a lot of detail within the individual reports themselves. Um, and then coming up in December, we've got a, a look forward with our regular annual uh, webinar with uh, Focusrite. So we're gonna be looking at uh, not just the year ahead, but the years ahead. So how is tourism gonna be changed and impacted over the long term. So join us there on December the 8th. Uh, and of course you can visit our website to uh, register. Okay, um, so uh, quick question, um, Dave, first for you, uh, will future versions of the State of the American Traveler address uh, progress with vaccines and how they are rolling out and how that's impacting you know, I, I'm not sure, Chris, that we'll explore it deeply in State of the American Traveler, but we've been doing so on our weekly study, uh, which is free to the public. So you guys can go access that if you want it. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Maybe in January we might, but we've got this tool going every week. So it's probably a better place to, to gather that info. Yeah, okay. And then, um... Dave Santucci, for you, we saw in, in the research um, that there's a lot of hesitancy around reopening uh, communities for travellers. So that's going to be a fundamental challenge for our industry, even as we're making advances in vaccine, uh, et cetera, and hopefully the safety is improving. How do we communicate that more effectively to our community? and ensure they feel comfortable wel wel welcoming visitors back. What are you, how are you thinking about that in the sort of spring, um, late winter, and hopefully, you know, we are gonna see this progress. Yeah, I, I think, you know, decisions are harder than ever and every decision we make, um, we're going back and revisiting right now. Uh, so for us, um, it's not a matter of whether or not we're going to try to uh, keep the economy going. Uh, we're going to do that as long as um, 
it, you know, as long as it's safe. Uh, but what we can do is encourage that safety uh, and, and encourage and ingrain that safety in starting with the local community and then building outwards and getting that message in front of everybody. So, you know, as we look forward, if, if these cases continue to rise and we continue to move in the wrong direction, we have to adjust our decisions and, and our approach. Um, and every time that we're looking at um, rising cases, we're shifting some of our message from inspiration over to safety um, so that that becomes the primary message. And we just made another shift today uh, where we took some of our funds that were on the inspiration side and moved them over to the safety side, uh, just because we feel like right now um, things aren't moving in the right direction. Uh, so as we move into, you know, post Christmas, um, we may be winding up in a situation where all of our messaging is around that. Um, but we'll, we'll stay in front of people. We'll keep reminding them uh, about safety and we'll just uh, adjust our messaging appropriately. Very good. Is there anything you'd add to that, uh, Dave Braden? No, Chris, I, I just think Dave's really wise to keep that flexibility because everything we see is uh, very fluid, you know, and yeah. gosh knows where we'll be a month from now, you know, yeah. so. So just while I've got uh, two such uh, uh, thought leaders with us, uh, meetings, meetings and events, obviously that's not part of the <laughs> Right now, hopefully when we are in recovery, that's going to be something we can start more actively thinking about recovery. So um, I know Dave, uh, Dave Brad and you and the team at Destination Analysts have been doing research around the meeting space. Um, how are you thinking about this whole area of the recovery of meetings? Yeah, you know, there's so many similarities between leisure travel and meetings right now in this regard. Uh, people are looking out down the road. As you guys know, a lot of you are probably working with planners and most of them are looking into the second half of next year before they're feeling confident putting anything in the books. Uh, we, we did some interviews recently with some event, event producers and one of the more interesting things that was said, I just, I thought it was fascinating. He was talking about, you know, if I put on an event, we can socially distance, we can wear, wear masks, we can do all these things we're supposed to do. But the first time somebody coughs, it's going to be like a gun went off in the event. It's like, yeah, I mean, what could describe the situation more accurately? People are afraid and a lot of people are afraid. And uh, it's just almost impossible to even think about it right now. Uh, so yeah. I don't know if that answers anything, Chris, but what it's but I, Yeah, obviously, when we're in a stronger recovery position, there is hopefully advancements around vaccines, we're going to be all having to work to ensure that we rebuild that confidence and put in place structures. And this could include insurance solutions around force module clauses so that people feel confident taking the risk to, to plan events. So Dave Santucci, what, how are you thinking about it in Chattanooga? I think about it just like the way we lost uh, opportunities to, to do what we wanted, it'll be layered back on in the opposite direction. So the largest events, the biggest gatherings will be the last to come back. But the first things I think to come back are gonna be the outdoors uh, sports uh, opportunities. So mm. you know, especially uh, sports like baseball, softball, where you can socially distance and play uh, safely. Um, so there's efforts around just, you know, what can we do in that space to, to encourage there? And then small meetings, you know, uh, we're already seeing a return of, you know, 50 or less, that type of uh, meeting. Uh, although this recent rise is, is putting a slowing on that. But um, as we come out the other side, I think you'll see small meetings come back first. Regional meetings where people can drive in and they don't necessarily have to fly in. Um, so that's where we're looking at it. And we're just, uh, you know, also thinking about the fact that um, meetings, meeting planners are thinking two, three years out. And so, you know, it's not a matter of talking to them about what are you doing in 2021? It's what are you doing in 2022 and 2023? Uh, and that's, that's where our, you know, our sales and meetings uh, team is focused. Yeah. Very good. Okay, well, why don't we wrap it up there? So uh, thanks so much to uh, Dave Braddon and the whole team at Destination Analysts. Um, thank you. 
Dave Santucci and the team of the Chattanooga Tourism Company for your insights and perspective today. But most importantly, thank you to all the attendees. Best of luck, stay safe, stay well, and uh, we look forward to uh, connecting with you soon. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris.